Oops, there's always a way out, Wallace. And I'll find it. You'll never take me. Get her alive, Sydney. I don't care. Come in. Hello. Harry Wallace. Jeff Randall, pleased to meet you. Actually, it was uh, Mr. Opkirk I wanted to see. I'm afraid that would be a bit tricky. How oh, tricky? He's dead. That's very tricky. But I'm his partner. If you'd like to come through, I'm sure I'll be able to help. Perhaps. Yeah, I, I used to know his father, Larry. He was my sergeant. Right. You're not Inspector Harry Wallace, are you? <laughs> was once. How lovely to meet you, Mr. Wallace. Mm. Take a seat. Marty used to talk about you an awful lot, you know. What was it you'd say, Harry and Larry? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, what happened to Marty then? Was it uh, illness? No, he was he was working on a case and he was murdered. So, history repeats itself. Poor old Marty. <laughs> Pupil, I think it's safe to say that you can now graduate with honors, a fully qualified ghost. But there is still much to learn. You are only at grade one. However, I see no reason why you shouldn't be allowed to get out and about a bit, meet some of the other inhabitants, and join the club, as it were. You mean there's more to the afterlife than this? Much more. You have only ever had the tiniest of glimpses. Then I shall explore the lot. Only if you are very foolish, there are some areas you will not wish to visit. Like where? Like the waiting room, where countless moribund spirits are filed away. 
those inanimate souls who have lost contact with the mortal realm. But how can that happen? Everything that happens among the living has resonance among the dead. The connections made there can connect with our world. And connections broken can sometimes never be mended. You mean, if something happened to Jeff, then I might lose touch with him? Yes, or if something happened to you, that's why I'm constantly nagging you to keep up with your lessons. I don't ever want to see you ending up there. But enough of these gloomy thoughts. I feel... I feel a ceremony coming on. <laughs> Not you! He was a mean, vicious little bastard, was Sidney Crabb. After he copped it, well, we thought the reign of the Crabs was over. But we hadn't reckoned on his little brother, Morris. <laughs> He'd never been interested in the family business. Shy, bookish type. He turned out to have quite a flair for it. We couldn't lay a finger on him. He seemed to have an almost supernatural ability to stay one jump ahead of the game. So... Me and Larry, in the end, well, we set him up. <laughs> it wasn't difficult. All very hush-hush. Nobody was supposed to know about it. Somebody else's wife. But you knew about it, didn't you? She was my wife, Mr Randall. Deirdre. I'm not sure about this, Harry. I am, Larry. The pension of me off. Bullet Sydney put in my back. Before I go, I'm gonna end this thing once and for all. I still don't like it. You don't have to like it. Just do as you're told. Deirdre. Deirdre. Where are you, Deirdre? Up here, darling. Surprise, surprise. Got a little something for you, Morris. I'm sorry. Inspector Wallace. Eh? Flying everywhere. Morris took a slug in the head and Larry took one in the chest. Larry. I'm sorry, Larry. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. It's okay, Harry. I don't think it's serious. No. You'll be all right, mate. What? Morris, did we get him? Sydney. It's Morris, old mate. Sydney's long dead. I can see Sydney kneeling down. Sydney! Sydney! No! It was the last thing he ever said. It must have been hallucinating. I thought he was going to pull through, but it was like the life had just been plucked out of him. He was a good copper. Marty used to talk about him a lot, but he never told me how he died. No. He was only eight years old at the time. Poor little mate. What a mess. What a... <coughs> Still in there. The bullet. Right next to my spine, so they couldn't operate. Been rattling around my body ever since. Finally found its way to my heart. And he didn't know it's going to shift again. And... I'll be joining Larry six feet under. I'm very sorry to hear that, Mr Wallace. Well, we none of us live forever. But before I go, I want to try and put things right. See, I've got a pretty substantial life insurance policy. It's no good to me. I've got no family. And it's not like I believe there's anything there after you've gone. Onward and upward, brave soul of mine. A horn blast calls you down the open road. Do you hear it? Do you see the golden sign? The heavens now are your abode. Purest air shall be your wine, and clouds of joy shall be your foe. Your medal, your diploma, and here, your membership card. A word of warning, Mr. Hopkirk. Limbo is a powerful and mysterious place. You will not always be under my wing. There are dangers even here. 
I'll be all right, Mr. Wyvern. What can happen to me after all? I'm already dead. Yeah, so it all came out. It was the end of Wallace's career. He was booted out of the police force. He's working as a security guard now. Well, Morris Crabbe has been in a coma ever since. Yeah. Oh, what a cock up. No wonder Wallace feels so guilty about it mm. all. Which is why he's hired us to track down Morris, so he can put some money towards his care. Look, Jeannie, when we get there, will you just let me do all the talk and you keep your mouth shut? <laughs> why? Jeannie, I'm the trained detective. You're just, just a girl. Oh. Jeannie! Jeannie, it was just a joke. It was just a joke. I know it wasn't, Jeff. A joke is when you say something funny and the other person laughs. Why didn't someone tell me about this before? Schoolboy era. What is it? Hello, I'd like to come in, please. Do you remember? Gold card. Ducky, welcome to Limbo. Care for a glass of champagne? That'll be very nice, my good man. That's if you are a man. Slips down easy, doesn't it, sir? It doesn't taste of anything. Well, that's because it doesn't exist. None of this is real, after all. It's just whatever you want it to be. Anything? Anything at all, ducks. Right. I'll have a pint. Mm. Wish I wasn't dead. Oh, God, yes, the crabs. They lived on this street years ago. Rather exciting, isn't it? One of the reasons the house prices are so high, I think. A little colourful history. That post box over there, that's where Terry the Overcoat Robinson was decapitated. But it was all before my time, as you see. Luckily, things have changed and the working class folk have moved on. Except for old Ken, number 68. He knows everyone. Oh, yes. As I know everyone. Met Margaret Thatcher, you know, before she was PM. Yeah. And I once bumped into Sir Lawrence Olivia in the street, and he swore at me. Lovely voice. It, look at this gearbox from an Austin Healy. Yeah. It's amazing the stuff that people will throw away. They were a bad bunch, the crabs. Though they loved kids. You know Dr. Barnard, the transplant man? Did my brother Alfred. Lungs. You see this? I salvaged this lot from a house up the road. They left it all in a skip. Perfectly good wood. Apart from the dry rot. When Morris had his accident, of course there was no one left to take care of him. His mother had passed over just before. Sydney had gone. Morris was in hospital for a while. St. Lucy's. Could still be there for all I know. Thanks very much, that's great. Thank Johnny you. Johnny Herbert, the racing driver, he, no, he crashed into my car Thank once. Thank you very much, that's great. And I once worked with that. And how about you? Have you haunted anywhere interesting? Oh, I used to do that sort of thing all over the place, but I don't bother with it much anymore. It's so boring. Mm, yes, isn't it just... And how did you die, that's another rude question. I myself died very dramatically. I threw down my life to save, um... Poodle? You should know the kind of 
can't give out any information on patients. It's strictly confidential. But somebody wants to give him some money and make sure he's properly looked after. That's really none of my concern. The fact is, I can't tell you where Maurice Crabbe is. So he was here, then? Look, if you're not visiting a patient, could you kindly leave the hospital premises? Thanks. Excuse me, did you say Maurice Crabbe? Yes. I remember Maurice. She wouldn't, too young. <laughs> Doctors and patients come and go. Me, I've been here forever. He just lay there, did Maurice, for months and months. Sleepy looked, really peaceful. Then one day, someone came and took him away. Someone who? A lady. Don't know who she was. Nice lady, I'd seen her before, visiting. Anyway, they just wheeled him out, and that was the last I saw of him. People come and go here, you know. They come in sick, and they go out well. Or else they go out dead. It's nice here, isn't it? It's boring. I'm so bored of it. Oh, I'm so bored, I wish I was dead. But you are dead. No, really dead. Dead and gone. Dust. Oh, I wish I could throw myself into a bit of oblivion. Bit of what? Oh, you are green, aren't you? It's where you go when you can't stand the boredom anymore. Oh, your soul gets torn into a million pieces and you writhe in endless torment, but at least it can make a change. So why don't you chuck yourself in it, then? It would be just too boring. Do you care for another glass of imaginary champagne, Ducky? Mm, why not, eh? I'm celebrating. I've finally arrived. Things are looking good. How lucky can one guy be? I kissed her and she kissed me. Like the fella once said, ain't that a kick in the head? The room was completely black. Hugged her and she hugged back Like the sailor said, quote Ain't that a hole in the boat? My head keeps spinning I go to sleep, I keep grinning If this is just the beginning My life is gonna be beautiful She's telling me we'll be wed She's picked out a king-size bed I couldn't feel any sadder Or I would be dead Tell me quick Oh, ain't that a kick? Tell me quick What I'm going to do is, I'm going to hack into the hospital computer system to find out where they took Morris to. Oh, yeah, and how are you going to do that, Mr. Computer Whiskid? On account of my computer whiskidiness. OK, so how do you do it? I'll tell you what, don't you worry your pretty little head about it just at the moment, Jimmy, OK? Ow, it was a joke! It was a joke! I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you behave yourself. I'm going to go to the library and check out the old newspaper reports. Jeannie, come here. Jeannie, if you want to be a private detective, you've got to be much more precise in your language, you know. Don't just say the first thing that comes into your head. You're going to check out the reports. Check out? Examine? Nice. Nice. Perfect. OK, I'll see you later. Later? <sighs> right, how would you get into this thing? Marty? Marty! Marty! Really? You're a private detective as well? I bet you've got some stories to tell. No? Oh, well, nice talking to you. So why can't this Inspector Wallace character look for Morris himself? He was a policeman after all, wasn't he? Exactly, Wendy. How close do you think he'd get? He was the one that shot Morris in the first place. Good point. Morris is well hidden somewhere. But if we can hack into the hospital computers... Mm, listen to can... you. Proper little detective, aren't you, sis? <laughs> I guess I am. 
Maybe I should get my name painted on the office door. Hmm. It's just that Jeff needs all the help he can get. It's a bit of a lost soul these days. Hmm, you're very good at feeling sorry for other people. No, I just get protective over Jeff. Do I detect the stirrings of passion? What, Jeff? Don't be ridiculous. You're blushing, darling. I am not blushing. It's just... Sometimes I'd like to hold him and tell him everything's going to be all right. Mm, I wish someone would do that for me. Oh, mm. everything's <laughs> going to be all right. Hello. Ah! Marty! What the bloody hell do you think you're doing? I've got some great news, Jeff. Not now, Marty. Look. What? Oh, sorry. Yes. You kept that quiet, didn't you? Marty, get out. Now! Marty, don't you ever appear when I'm in the shower again. You're always turning up the wrong moment. It's very embarrassing. Well, I don't know, do I? I don't know what you're up to till I get down here. Anyway, let me tell you about... Listen, Marty, I need you to hack into a computer system for me. Hey, I'm trying to tell you something important. You want to think about somebody else for a change? I'm dead, remember? Marty, I'm, I'm... listen, I'm sorry, but nobody ever said that being dead was going to be one long cocktail party. Well, actually, it is. That's what I've been trying to tell you about. I've finally done it, grade one. I'm now allowed to mingle with all the other dead people I've met. Marilyn Monroe, Mata Harry, Bridget Bardo. Bridget Bardo isn't dead. Well, all right, it wasn't her. It was that other really sexy French actress. Look, I'm very pleased for you, Marty, but will you listen... Marie Antoinette. Marty, shut up and listen to me while I tell you what it is what I want you to do. I can't believe you're trying to find Morris Crabb. You killed my father, for God's sake. You don't know that. It was a stray bullet. It could have been anyone. And why are you apologising for him? Quite frankly, Marty, Wallace is often a very good fee and I'm skint. Will you stop doing that? He's been in a coma for 30 years. He's served his time, hasn't he? All I want is the address. All right, I'll get it for you. But after that, I'm having no more to do with this, right? You're on your own on this one. I'm going back to where I'm appreciated. So don't try and call me. How you did it, Jeff? How you found the address? I'm a detective genius. It's my job. Jeff, has anyone ever told you that you look like a monkey? It was a joke. OK? It was a joke. But you said a joke's when you say something funny and the other person laughs. All right, it wasn't a joke. So you're saying I do look like a monkey? Yeah, you do. Oh, right. What kind of monkey? <clears throat> Mrs. Hope? Yes? Hello. Could we have a word, please? But I don't know where Morris is. You went to see him in the hospital, though? Yes. But I don't know who told you I brought him home with me. It was 30 years ago. Why can't I be left alone? But we've got a substantial amount of money for Morris. And you won't tell me who this mysterious benefactor is? I can't. He wants to remain anonymous. I know this is difficult, dredging up old memories, but if you had any idea where he was... Morris never wanted anything to do with Sidney's life. But after Sid died, he had no choice. Well, he's out of it now, and I don't want anything to take him back. Well, we wouldn't, Mrs Hope. But we're not going to give up. It's just a matter of time. We're going to find Morris, whatever. Why? Why can't you leave him be? You're just stirring up ghosts from the past. Have you got any olives? Green or black, cheeky. 
doesn't make any difference really, does it? They're all imaginary. I might as well eat cheese footballs. I might as well eat real footballs. There's no taste, no texture, no nothing. That's a double negative, ducks. Sorry. Oh. I'm cut! Hop Kirk! Come on, Jeff, we shouldn't be in here. We're just doing our job. I mean, Jean, come on, it's quite clear she's not telling us everything, isn't it? Yes, but if she doesn't want to talk to us, then we shouldn't force her to. We could ask her around. We could watch the house. We could even follow her. That won't be necessary. If I take you to him, will you let him rest in peace? 30 years. 30 years asleep. He was always a dreamer. And now dreams is all he has. We'll bring you the money, Mrs Hope. I don't want any money. Eh? Can't you understand? You were never here. You never saw Morris. You will go and never come back. You don't know anyone I'll wait for this upgrade. I think you've got the wrong bloke. I've never seen you before in my life. Nice try. Shaving off the moustache, don't fool me. You always was a weasel, a weasel and a coward. Yeah, all right, I'm a weasel and a coward, but I think it's a severe case of mistaken identity. I am going to rip your soul out and eat it. They say that you can't feel nothing up here, but you can always feel pain, and I know how to hurt you in a million different ways. Yeah, I've always said that the only good copper is a dead copper, and the only good dead copper is a good dead copper in pain. Now, that wasn't a very elegant insult, was it? Shut up, Gomez. Well, who got out of the wrong side of his coffin this morning, then? Well, like I think it's my father, Larry, you want. I'm not a copper, I never have been. You're not Larry Upkirk. You're not Larry Upkirk? I'm his son, Marty. Pleased to meet you. And you are? Who am I? I am your nemesis. Well, we've already established that, but could you be a bit more specific? Sydney Crabb. Bloody hell. It's definitely my father you want. We'll see about that. Larry Upkirk, listen up! I've got your son here, and I'm about to make his death very miserable indeed. You can run off, Kirk but you'll never be free of me. You will never be free of me! I'm sorry, Harry, but she's adamant. She wants none of it. I'm afraid there's nothing else we can do for you. I'm offering her a substantial amount of money. It's not about the money. You didn't tell her who I was? No, no, no. I don't see what the problem is, then. Listen, Mr Wallace, you felt rotten about what you did to Morris and you wanted to make sure he was all right. Well, he is. He's obviously well looked after, he's loved, but things are as good as they can be. You couldn't give me the address, could you? I, I, I could send something, a, a letter no. or... Harry, she doesn't want any contact at all. I'm sorry. Maybe you should just respect her wishes. Put it out of your mind. Forget about the past. It's all over now. Maybe you're right. Sorry, Harry. Bye. Bye. Do you think we've done the right thing? Of course we did. Lost our fee again, though. Yeah, well... It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the gates of heaven. That's true, Jeannie. But, you know, I don't want to enter the gates of heaven. All I want to do is pay one, or perhaps two... Can you imagine three of these bills? You gotta help me, Wyvern. I'm in big trouble. Oh? Sydney Crabs after me. Who? Somebody that my dad sort of kind of killed. If there is blood involved, Mr. Hopkirk, then there is nothing I can do. The ties of death are stronger than I, I warned you. Well, maybe my dad can help me. Where can I find him? He's not here in Nimbo. He passed over to the realm of the dreaming dead. Right. 
Where's that then? Second star to the right and straight on to morning. Eh? It's not exactly anywhere. This place is a construct of dreams and memories. In his death is where you'll find him, if you find him. In his death and in your heart, he is not of this world. You can do no more than talk. No. If he's my dad, he'll help me. Somehow he'll help me. Jeannie! Oh, uh, oh, I thought you might like to drown your sorrows, but maybe some other time. No, don't go. Jeannie, I'll only be a minute. Come in, please. Go through. No funny business, though, yeah? I'm not sure about this, Addy. I am, Larry. Dad! I'll end this thing once and for all. Still don't like it. I don't have to like it. Just do as you're told. Avery. Dad! Dad? Dad! Who is it? It's me. You look vaguely familiar. It's me, Marty, your son. Marty? You look different. Have you put on weight? Dad, I'm 30 years old. You haven't seen me since I was eight. You forget so much. So much. Well, I'll be seeing you. Things Dad, to do. Dad, wait. I need to talk to you. Listen. You remember Sidney Crabb? Sidney Crabb. The gangster. Sidney Crabb, the gangster. Ah, Sidney Crabb. It's all right. I've forgiven him. Yeah, well, he hasn't forgiven you, but he can't get to you, so he's after me instead. Are you dead, son? Yes, I'm afraid I am. Those upkirks always were an unlucky bunch. Always destined to die before I would ever amount to anything. Even as a child, I knew you'd never amount to anything. Dad, I really needed to hear that right now. Look, I need your help. He's after me. I'm too and... busy. Busy? Busy doing what? Million and one things. Million and one. Dad! Dad! Never amount to anything, us up, Kirks. Even in death. Dad! Your father wouldn't help you. Yeah, I know. I don't know what to do. How to get away from Sydney. Maybe I could just stay down with Jeff. If you have seen Sydney Crabb here in Limbo, then he is a restless soul like yourself, still attached to his chosen one, to someone on the mortal plane. You may never be able to get away from him anywhere. Well, what's the worst he could do? He could cast you into the pit of oblivion where your soul... Yeah, 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 I know. Languish for time without end and pain without beginning. Ah, thanks for the tip, old man. Thanks for the tip. Try not to be afraid, Mr. Hopkirk. He will feed on your fear. Who said I was afraid? Jeff? No, oh, it's all right. You'll do fine. Was it about Morris Crabb? Yeah, I've uh, had an idea. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I thought you could take me to him. I'm sorry. Take me to him. You know I can't do that. Can't you? <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Jeff, Sid's after me. Jeff! Jeannie! Jeff! Jeff! That's enough of this silliness. Let's go and find Morris. 
And don't try Colin not to Randall again. If he comes through that door, he's a dead man. Jack! Come on, let's move. This is ridiculous. Stop your squawking and get out of the car. Morris Crab any money, did you? The vermin that killed my best friend. Stole my wife. The man whose brother put a bullet in my back and consigned me to a long, slow death. Don't make me laugh, darling. I wouldn't want to give him any money. So all you ever planned was to kill him? Well, and then what? Did you really think you'd get away with it? What do I care? <coughs> <coughs> There's a bullet next to my heart and he needs to move a millimetre and I'm dead. Thirty years I've been dying while he lies there asleep. Is that fair? No. I'm going to make sure he goes first. Jeannie? There you are. What are you doing here? Where's Jeannie? She's been kidnapped. Oh, yeah, of course she has. Wallace came in with a gun and bundled her off in her car. I was going to go with him, but the further away from you I am, the less my powers get. Marty, why didn't you come and get me? Because you were in the shower. Oh, Marty, you moron. Come on, let's get after them. In the shower, make yourself all clean and fresh so you could seduce my fiance. Hello, Deirdre. Harry! Oh. Sydney was in cold storage. He'd given up haunting, he was just waiting. Waiting for what? Well, he'd lost contact with his chosen one. What, the person down here who can see him, yeah? Yeah. So who is Sydney's chosen one? I don't know, but he must have lost touch with them, and when you lose touch, you become inactive. You shut down. What woke him up, then? You did. When you and Jeannie went digging up the past and stirring up all that old business about him and his brother Morris, it reactivated him. Yeah, I'm sorry, Marty, but I couldn't have known, could I? Can Sydney get to you down here? I don't know, I'm not sure. I don't think so. But I can't stay down here forever. I get tired, and when I get tired, I've got to go back. He might, you'd have thought once you were dead, all your troubles would be over, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, the bottom line is, Jeff, I wish I was still alive. Bottom line is, Marty, I wish you were too. Wakey, wakey. Jeff, in here. Jeannie! Jeannie, are you all right? Ah! Where's Wallace? Sweet dreams. Ah! You're satisfied. I'm sorry, Mr. Soap. I thought we were doing the right thing. Morris. Morris! It's Wallace! Oh. <laughs> you all right? Of course I'm not all right, Marty. I've just been shot. It's OK. It's not bleeding much. Morris, you old fraud. Sorry. I'm not. No, Sydney. I'll deal with you later, Morris. No, Sid, leave me alone. Please, leave me alone. I chose you. You can't unchoose me. Now, up cut! <laughs> You're coming with me. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, now, for Here you go, the pit of oblivion. Well, copper's brat, son of P. 
plod, progeny of filth. Do you have the guts to do what I did? Do you have the guts to throw yourself into oblivion, or am I going to have to help you? Oh. See, I was only eight years old when you died. You can't blame me. Shut up! My only regret is that he only had one son. I wish there was more of you upcut scum to lob down there in the plug hole of eternity. Yeah! And when I'm done with you, I'm going to go and give that bullet by Wallace's heart a little nudge, and you won't get that fat sod. And after that, after that, I am going to have words with my brother Morris for tricking me all these years. Oh, sweet death. I've never believed in ghosts. I don't think I ever really believed Morris, but he believed it. He really believed his brother Sidney was haunting him, making him do things, bad things. And then when he was shot, he was in a coma for months. But one day I was with him in the hospital and he winked at me. He was awake. But the only way he could be free of his haunting was to pretend that he was still out of it. After a while, he said, Sydney, stop coming. And in the end, I brought him here and we've been hiding ever since. The ambulance is on his way. How's he doing? I don't know. He's unconscious. It feels very cold. Take the plans. Let's your uncle Sidney point you in the right direction. Oh, Sidney, please! Can we work something out? Don't waste your breath, Opko. Nothing and no one is going to save you now. No, you're not, Paul. Come on, we're going to have to get you back. It's too late for that. It's never too late, Jeff. Come on, Jeff. Fight. Come on, please. Too soon, Morris. Your troubles aren't over yet. Come on, let's get this over with. Listen to me. I've been there, right? I'm the one who's dead, so don't try and tell me about how the afterlife works. All right, Marty, keep your shirt on. All I'm saying is, is that Wallace had a pretty miserable life. He deserves to see out eternity somewhere nice. Jeff! The man tried to kill you! Yeah, but he didn't, did he? I mean, I lost a lot of blood, yeah. But I think at the end of the day, he had a point. What point? He was a copper. Of all people, he should have understood about justice. He'll have gone downstairs. He was all right. He'll be on a cloud now, somewhere up there, probably playing the harp. Harp? It'll be fire and brimstone and treacle for him. No way. No way they'll forgive him. Jeff, no. for the last time, he'll have gone down. He was a bad man. Marty, you're so easy to wind up. Larry. Right. 